that's what I had wanted to address a few minutes ago to expound a little on what Ms. Davis had said. We refer to ourselves in Madison County probably <coughs> as fiscally constrained, but in reality we are poor. Our, that just means we're poor, and there. you know that. Uh, our residents, most of them, don't have the money to pay for the water filtration systems. We had people today who spoke in Madison. They pay anywhere from $45,000 to $6,000 and above just to get the initial system. That doesn't include replacing the different parts that have to be replaced yearly or however often they need to. When you start talking about buying water and uh, it's costing our county right now several thousand just to do the testing for the people because of course we're doing it for free. So for them, because they shouldn't have to pay for it. But when you look at all the different areas that the people have to try to cover to make sure that they're not using contaminated water, a lot of them don't have the money for it and because of that truthfully, a lot of them who have lived close to the river for many, many years, they don't bother. And we don't know what they may at times deal with as a result of the water, but they know they don't have the money. They've always been there or they've been there for a number of years and they they say another spill and they just don't bother. But the bottom line, and I think with most things, bottom line just comes down to money and it hits a lot of our residents very hard along that area. I have a question. I have a question. As far as accountability goes, when these bills happen, are you, is, is anybody fined? I mean, it seems like, is there anything, I'm like, you just built X amount of raw sewage, does the EPA fine the city? Is there any kind of... The EPA, EPB can fine the city. But that is not like... Automatic. It's not, it's not automatic, automatic or is it based on the gallon or whatever it is, but they, they do have that authority to... Have they? Uh, have they ever? Have they ever? I've been here, I've been city manager two years. Um, since I've been here two years, I know that we've not had We've been going on for a long time. Before I've not been happening. So we're, we're, under, we're under the similar, uh, still from the with, uh, with uh, EPD. Uh, but um, as far as I can remember back, I don't think we've had a fine. They, you know, what they've done in lieu of fines is they added more projects to keep the problem from happening. They, they'll, they'll do that many times rather than a dollar value. They'll add more projects to the consent order. How will the notification system change? Notifying, notifying us downstream. And the reason I asked a year or two ago, my oh yeah, we have one place in North Carolina. My last playing right in the water. We kayak a lot, Scott, like you do, and enjoying the water. Get the truck. I have a text from a local official. Stay out of the river. The spill had happened four or five days prior. We just found out that day. And I've been in the river playing in my lab and having a good time on the Kitchen River. How will the notification system change to guarantee that everyone, even those who don't have email and internet access on the river, know about your spills? Because that, to me, is criminal, criminal neglect because you're endangering their lives. I mean, because you're in that water, animals are in that water, farm animals are in that water, and no one knows. I don't think I have an answer to that. You ask to anybody on that email list, you can get it by phone, you can get it by um, notification, you get more specific with it as well. Um, if it's anywhere near a waterway, obviously you don't want an egg on anybody's face. We had um, one person in the campground to get a reverse 911 call, and we have quite a few people in the campground have no internet. So we're trying to take care of ourselves, and we're trying not to be dependent upon any government organization, because we do. You know, with the exception of a few people, um, you know, a lot of the people in Hamilton County, it's a 4K. So the, the folks that can help, I think, are helping <coughs> to do the job of it. But there has to be several ways of getting their advice. Mr. Parker, does anybody here from Madison County? Uh, do y'all live within how far of the river? Three miles. Did y'all get our code red announcements on your telephone? Yes. Right, so we have a code red system in Madison County in our emergency management can uh, pinpoint target areas in the county, put out a, a blast phone call, uh, automated message that, that gives those type of warnings. Well, I'm glad yeah. to see that in our county, that, I think that system worked pretty good. And uh, so I don't know if 
the Hamilton or Swanee has code red or similar type announcement notification system. Y'all are yeah. relying a lot on the uh, systems to tell you communications. I'm assuming that their battery or generator backup in the, in the event of a catastrophic electrical outage, they all are on battery or generator backup. My other question is, and I don't know if you can do it in this particular area, but all right, have y'all looked at uh, high injection uh, well, well pumps for overflow of the sewage? They do use them in Collier County, in South Florida. They pump 35,000 feet down in, into the aquifers, but scientists have said by the time it comes out in the ocean, it's purified. Yeah, now that's a uh, pretty uh, wild not allowed statement. Us to do it. Yeah, we only allow it to be surface discharge. I know down like in Gainesville, Florida, they have a deep well injection. They actually, instead of surface water injection, they dug a well 3,500 feet, and they're pumping it in the ground 3,500 feet. Uh, you know, some pros and cons, some folks are pro to that, some folks don't think they, uh, that should be happening either, so, you know, still some science needs to be done up in this area to make sure it's about right. soil conditions. Yeah, you know, they use a bubble that. system in South Florida. Yeah. Yeah. They inject them into the uh, brackish water system. They're going into the lower, lower Florida, I don't know yeah, if you can do that more up. Yeah, I don't know. You get higher than the yeah. sugar, it's hard to get a little bit lower. Well, whatever you can do to communicate with us, Get us some information and support us. Uh, and me as a citizen, I greatly appreciate your help. Mm -hmm. I have a question about those three alerts in Florida. The first one was put out on the tenth, when all anybody knew was there was spill. Okay, better safe than sorry. The second one was put out when, as I understand it correctly, Valdosta found an elevated bacterial level at US 84 which I believe we heard earlier is right next to the state line. Uh, does anyone about us know how many river miles from US 84 to the state line? Uh, 27, or about three days. And is anybody measuring at the intermediate boat ramps to see how the sewage is moving down the river? Valdosta, for example, is Valdosta doing that? No. We have uh, an answer from Tom Murdy of Swanee River Water Management District. We have done that, yeah. As you know. <coughs> Did you do it at Knight's Ferry? We, we haven't done it consistently, but we have done it you know, when, a, when a spill, you know, when a, when a location popped up, at, you know, either at 84 or at 31, and we looked upstream and downstream in conjunction with DOH and DEP. On specific days. Yeah, on specific days. Oh, no, and we did a site. Okay, and with the nice Fury Nick and yeah. USA 4 and State Line, but Valdosta has not. Valdosta no, basically flushed its sewage down no, the river. No, no, sir. I'm going to have to interrupt you there. And I just, just like the gentleman here said, when we got that hot spot at Mike's Creek, we went down there. And we took our crew down there. They took samples. They did the lab work. We took it to Lab and Thomas will work with you other folks are going to say, oh, they're just making the numbers up. The numbers that you were posted on your Facebook were much higher than the independent lab and our own folks said. So I really can't let you stand there and not say we hadn't been out there and do it. And you ever returned that data in response to the open records request I fired a week ago? I will have to talk to the city clerk about that. You can file it with me, sir. I asked you in your office earlier. And I gave you all the data. You asked me for the data, every 